Andrew, it's Lee. Hey, Lee, can you hear me? I can, thank you. I can't hear you, but. All right, let me check. <clears throat> my microphone is not muted, I'm raising my voice, does that help? Hi, I can't, I still, your volume maybe isn't up. Um, I'll work on that. Try it now. Uh, Andrew, I'm using my yep. Logitech camera with the microphone in it. You're good now. I got it. Okay. It was me. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> You're forgiven. <laughs> I'm telling you, all this stuff. Oh, Jesus. But. Uh, Andrew, uh, looking at the uh, agenda coming up, just a quick question. Is anybody in your shop looking after uh, transportation? Well, by default, that would be me. Um, but you know, between Rob and I, you know, we're we're trying to basically, uh, you know, tread water here. Um, but there Look, were no uh, apple. Andrew, I I realize it may only be the mandated reports that you've got to turn in to the state. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. No, I I understand that. So. Let me pull the agenda here. It's not a long one, but that means we'll talk forever. <laughs> All right. So did you see did you see the quickie bike path? Andrew, what's that? Oh, there's Alan. Hi, Alan. Hi there, Andrew. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Well, I think I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to figure this all out. I, you know. I know. Me too. <laughs> you're do, you guys are doing great, but I'm a little behind. I think so. Yeah. You're not mad at me about the bike path, are you? The the little monomoy thing. No, are you kidding? Okay, I, I love figured... bike paths. I mean, you know, it was a surprise. <laughs> I've wow. never, I've never seen a project uh, completed that quickly. <laughs> but well, me either. <laughs> so, I know. But I'd rather have a few more of those than the ones that take forever. So you know. yeah, me too. Me too. Speaking of which, what about um, the one going up uh, uh, North Mill Street to the um, old farm, old farm, right? You know, that's one. Is Rob joining us today? I, I don't think so. Because we had, there were two different like ideas there um, when Kara was here. Did you meet with her, Alan, about that? With Kara, yes, yeah. Because there was one idea that sort of went diagonally across and connected. And then there was one that sort of more followed the roads. Yes. Did you guys agree on the one you liked? I can't remember. Um, I think we liked the one that went parallel to the road because it seemed as though it was a simpler grade rather than going up and down and around. But okay. it frankly I, I, doesn't Alan, make any difference. Alan, I, I, I agree with Alan. And I thought that Mike had solidified that before he left. Yeah, that, that was my thinking. Yeah, so I don't know why that one isn't, I don't think that's, I don't think there's any Mesa or anything up there. So I, I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm going to put that on my list for Rob. I mean, you know, we were talking also with your, with land bank staff about the, you know, possible transfer. Mm -hmm. So, um, but let me find out about that. Because I, I, I believe there's money. I, I believe there was a funding for that. Yeah, that that's my recollection too, that Mike said that the funding was there, we were all set to go ahead and do it, and then there was a delay getting started, and then who knows. Okay. 
Yeah, because if, if Victor has the time, I'd rather have him go do it. So Yeah. <laughs> to see, that's the thing. He was sort of between jobs for a minute, and it's like, oh, well, let's see what we can get done, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that's definitely the way to work with Victor is to, uh, you know, when he has a slot to try yeah. and get, him, get him into it, so. Well, we, we still have about five minutes. I had a phone call from Rick. He, he lost his invitation, so I sent him a fresh one. He, he should be on soon. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I, don't ha I didn't print out the agenda. What, what's your main topics today? Um, let's say I want to review the our priority projects. And basically, the priorities are First, the missing sidewalks at Prospect Street, Pleasant Street, and Cliff Road, and Quaker Road. Um, though particularly uh, this year, for some reason, I guess it's just more people, but, um, you know, so that's at the top of at least my priority list, and we'll be discussing these. Um, Want to follow up on Lovers Lane, Akawa, and Monahasset to see what the status you know, is on those. Yep. Um, the third uh, priority was the downtown business district sidewalk improvements. Oh right. Uh, to see you know what what what's going on with those. So those are, as I said, we're, we'll be discussing those in terms of priorities and what we can do to facilitate those. Okay. Alan, if I could add something, I noticed that there are crews on Upper Main Street, uh, Main by Pleasant, looking like they're finally um, getting rid of those potholes. Yes. Yeah, they're pretty much done up there now. I drove it yesterday just to, uh, in my ranger truck, just to see how it was, and uh, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> oh, there's Nat. Hey, Nat. Um, the, uh, the other items, uh, Andrew, on the agenda that, uh, fourth one is traffic safety work group, um, the bicycle, um, committee and, you know, what other committees can we work with to further the goals and that we talked about before. And then, um, chapter 91 license monitoring. Uh, I tried to get hold of Jeff uh, Carlson, but uh, was unable to reach him to be for the meeting today. Okay. And then uh, generally road encroachments and public road maintenance. I was hoping Rob would be here for that, but um, you know that's a, <laughs> one of the things as far as the takings. Uh, of course, means the maintenance of the roads. And Rick pointed out that we're having. Um, he, you know, he pointed out a couple of things on Pulpus Road and, and our regular roads that need uh, some attention. So, yeah. And that's it for. Well, one, I'll tell you one um, area of encroachments that we found that's really serious is, um, you know, where Monomoy Village, the little cottages are. Oh, yes. Right there, um, you know, because the county has this extra wide layout from the mm -hmm. original layout of Milestone. Yes. And the property line goes, the first building that's there, it's basically like a foot away from that building. Ouch. So um, I know, you know, Rob and Ken are gonna try to talk to them because we wanna, you know, at least build that next section of path and then the final one that goes up in front of Island Lumber. So, um, but that's a major, major encroachment. If you drive by there, try to put, try to, Look at that and see how far that is. Yeah, wow. I did take a look at the uh, roadway easement uh, to see, you know, with the new bike path that just went in yep. uh, to, to see. And uh, now I was curious as to where, um, where the, you're going to cross to get over to the other, to the island lumber side of the Right. Yeah, the, we're going to have them design the best crossing right there. So um, the, uh, before we do that, we're going to have that done. Right. right. Yep. Good, good. 
Hi, Bill. Oh, there's Rick. Hey, Alan. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for your help, Lee. So, Rick, by the way, I, I put number six on the agenda um, in terms of I uh, added the uh, public road maintenance there um, for the the picture you sent me on Pulpus Road. Yeah, I watch out for those potholes every day. <laughs> I know. I counted six a lot because <laughs> I, I drove Pulpus Road every day myself several times a day, too. Yeah. And, I hit the one uh, right by um, Morrison Farm. I, you know, I, I was just driving along and apparently I was on that side of the road. Hit that one and I said, yikes. <laughs> Remember when the uh, truck, there was a, a bus or something turned over opposite Morrison Farm? Exactly. That was where, um, when Sarah Oktai was the uh, at the field station. It was yeah. a, a group of... Um, seniors from, um, well, I forgot the name of the group, but uh, yeah. Alan, we've lost you. Me? Uh, I'm here. <laughs> okay, you were speaking, but I couldn't hear you. Oh, um, okay, I'm, I'm showing that I'm not muted. No, no, you're good now. No, I can hear it now. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm showing it is four o'clock and um, I'll call a meeting of the Roads and Right-of-Way Commi Committee to order for Tuesday, August 18th. Um, so, Alan, I'm going to be, I'm going to be official because we're, on Zoom, because we're on Zoom, you need to do a roll call. Oh, um, okay. Roll call. Um, Alan, Chairman is here or present. Um, Lee? Lee, are you there? Uh oh, Lee, you're frozen here. Um, Rick? Yep, I'm here. I'm just coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Nat? I uh, here. Yes. And uh, right. Bill? Yeah. Bill? Present. And Lee? Uh oh. <laughs> Um, we seem to, I, uh, uh, I, I can't, I can't get to Lee. Let me see if uh, I can hit him with a chat. Okay. Oh, hi, Ken. Hello, Alan. Welcome. Uh, we seem to have lost Lee. He was... He's probably going to log back in. Oh, okay. Um... Um, 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 um. All right, while we're waiting for Lee, um, let me uh, uh, call for any public comment. I don't think we have anyone on. Oh, wait, we do have. We have two people in chat. Unless that's you and Lee. <laughs> oh, that was uh, me to say yeah, that okay. he was frozen. Okay, so uh, seeing no public comment, let's go to um, approval of minutes from our July 21st meeting. You want me to jot this down, uh, Alan, until he gets back? Oh, yeah, that would be helpful, Bill. Thanks. I keep joking with Lee that he needs a new computer, but. <laughs> uh, so the motion made by? Uh, so. Um, I'll make uh, a motion to approve the minutes of July 21st. 
Okay, thanks, Nana. Is there a second? Yes. Uh, Rick, is that a second? Sure, second, sure. Right. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the minutes from July 21? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, uh, got a roll call. Okay, roll call. <laughs> uh, the chair votes uh, aye. Nat? Aye. Bill? Aye. Rick? Aye. <laughs> and um, we'll count Lee as an aye <laughs> because he wrote him. So, <laughs> all right. Um, uh oh. <clears throat> Uh, I'm tempted to give uh, Lee a call, but if he's... I have a... Do you want to text him or I'll text him if you want me, Alan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would you... I'll text Lee. Okay. Sure. You know, you could always hit the record button and then he, uh, he can catch up to do the actual minutes. Oh, I see. Now, can, can... Want me to do it? Let's see if he's got it. Uh... Oh, wait, it said, yeah, I tried to push it. It said I have to request permission from the host. So or, I think you're the host now, aren't you? No. He, no, he might be recording it because when I pushed it, it says, um, uh, it says stop cloud recording, which I'm not doing. So okay, all right. He may in fact be recording this, although generally it would say so. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, it's flashing. Oh, good. All right. Well, let's assume yeah, the that. Yeah, there. So it is being recorded. So good. Okay. Let's let's continue on then um, until uh, Lee can work up his. Um, um, <laughs> the issue. Um, okay, the next item on our agenda is the projects review list. And you remember we talked at our July meeting about uh, the priorities and we went over all the items on the agenda that uh, the projects list. And uh, I wanted to narrow it down. I wanted to actually prioritize the items that we talked about. So based on our discussions at the uh, July meeting, um, I extrapolated and um, the first priority is the missing sidewalks. And there are four of them, uh, Pleasant Street, Prospect Street, Cliff Road, and uh, Quaker Road. And um, so those are the four areas that need a solution uh, in terms of how do we get pedestrians and bicycles, but mainly pedestrians. What we really you know, need is at least a sidewalk uh, in on those uh, four areas. Those are all um, four areas where people are just literally dumped into the, the street. So on that particular, um, on those particular items. We did, uh, we do have a link on Prospect Street. You may remember uh, um, Nat, you and Lee oh, yeah. and- um, We took the walk. Yeah, we took the walk <laughs> along Prospect Street and we also, uh, there was a plan that was developed um, years ago um, that shows that there is enough room for a sidewalk along that uh, stretch of Prospect Street. So that was a solution that, that, um, that we looked at. One of the other ones to Prospect Street was the bike path going up North Mill Street connecting with Old Farm at the top of the hill and then coming down um, onto Joy Street at that point. 
then the, <laughs> the, the connection to get over to the Madigan bike path was to go, oh, is that Lee? Uh, the, the connection was to um, um, go up the new, um, the, um, oh, what is it? No, I know what you're saying. Yeah, the, 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 the new the bike path. Mount Vernon, down Mount Vernon. Right. And then we sort of, but that was, that was all done before the bike path on Milk Street Extension was complete. Right. And we were, remember we were debating about Saratoga and John Stackpole had an idea of reversing direction and Bert was right. weighing in on that because he rides his bike all the time through there. Right. And now we've, we've sort of moved towards Wind Street now as the sure. sort of yeah. connector, correct? Uh, Alan? Correct. Yeah, that that was the route. And the, what that would do was get people from the um, the 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 muck. <laughs> from the hospital. Yeah, all the way the over path. to Madigan <laughs> Road. Yeah. Um, but the the main things we need to construct there are the North Mill Street section to get up to um, uh, Old Farm. Um, and then, of course, Wind Street, the bike path, um, and the improvement on Wind Street, uh, which is more of a major, uh, a yeah. major uh, project. Well, um, I think if you don't mind me just weighing in a little bit on this, no, Alan, it, it, this is first of all bringing keeping this alive is like really important. Okay, it took a lot of work just to get the path to to Herky Stojak's house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I believe, and I could be wrong. Don't 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 hold me to this one. But I believe there's going to be some work on prospect again by the sewer department. I think I'm not 100% positive. I don't believe they're going to be grinding up the whole road like they did before, but we need to mark. And I, and I think the, 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 the DBW director knows, uh, you know, the east side of the road really just needs some curbing move back in that one section across from Stojax and then down past uh, Paul Morris's house, uh, Alan, that's how mm -hmm. I, that's how I tell where I am when I yeah. say that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is, is the, the curbing that that homeowner put in the ground around yeah. the corner yeah. is very loose. It's sort of just in the sand, it's loose. That should be moved back about 16 inches and you'll have a good wide, just enough width for vehicles to pass and repass. But on the other side of the road, which you were talking about that sidewalk, that was a plan, I believe, when mm -hmm. Muhammad Muhammad was here. Then that's how long ago this was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there is room to continue it all from from basically where Matt Mulcahy's house is, down in front of uh, Elizabeth Kayleen's, and then connect at Joy Street and clean that up there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. I remember when we walked that. In fact, we walked it with Mike Burns, and I think it was either Mohammed or... And Ed Pesci was with us, I think, that day, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's sort of like a two-part solution. The bicycles are never going to all go up over Mill Hill, but at least there'll be a way with signage, wayfinding, as Mike used to say, wayfinding. Mm -hmm. I never even knew what that word meant. And, and, and find their way to Mattaquet without going on Quaker Road. Mm -hmm. But the other part is more about vehicle safety, hitting those curbs, and the bikes and pedestrians that will be on that road, regardless of what we build, is what I'm saying. Right. You know what I mean, Alan? I think that that's how we have to look at this as almost two separate projects. The bike path part, is sort of by itself, but then the rest of it is more of a safety improvement than it is really anything else. Okay. And I also want to throw something in and I don't know if this is something that we could recommend at this level or bike committee 
probably would be the one to do it. So today, I just want you guys to know, today I sat in my car, my truck, at 20 New Lane for about 20 minutes on the phone. I wouldn't want to ride a bike down New Lane if I was paid to do it. Mm -hmm. I watched two landscape trucks with trailers pass a bike at Mill Pond. Mm. Alan, where are they going? Hyannis? Mm. Where are they catching the train? Tuscansett? I can't believe that people do that. Mm. I'm, I believe that we should be discussing more of the shared bike road uh, decals in the street on roads like New Lane. You should not be passing bicycles on New Lane. That's a good we, point. We, we have it on Washington Street. And I can tell you one thing, you can pass a bike on Washington Street a lot easier than New Lane, Alan. Yeah, I know. And I know. it's da so dangerous. And, 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 and those, you know, the company that's putting those down, are we doing that? The DPW putting those down now? I think they are. I think so. Hold on, uh, hold on just a second. Yeah. I have uh, Lee on the phone here. Hi, Lee. Right. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll be back just as soon as I can. Okay. Now, uh, it is recording. So, um, uh, Bill pointed that out that it is recording. So, <laughs> so, so good. All right. Okay, Lee. Thanks. Gotcha. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay. That was, uh, that was Lee. And um, he's having a computer issue, <laughs> so he's trying trying to get back in. But anyway, but he can hear hard. us, so he can still. So Bill and him can share minutes together. Then, right. Well, it is recording, so oh, okay. um, so so he said he can pick up the minutes uh, if he can't get back in from recording. So that's okay. all I have. Sorry, I just Nick. wanted Go to ahead. throw that 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 issue in. I see it on the agenda, and I knew it was there, and I was thinking about it today that there should be those share the road decals in more places. And I know they've added some streets. There's a lot of them decals around. Right. I saw a bicycle being passed on Gardner Street this year for the first time in my life, Alan, that a car tried to pass a bike at the old fire station. I was in a state of shock when I saw it. And I mm -hmm. couldn't believe my eyes. So I'm telling you, the stuff that goes on, we're so lucky that there isn't more accidents. Yeah, no, I so, know that. So there you go. That's it for me for now. Okay, yeah, New Lane. Actually, uh, John Stackpole, when he was on the committee, had mentioned New Lane. Uh, unfortunately, there's no room uh, because the cemeteries go right up to the road edge. And uh, the roadway is pretty much full with the road itself because uh, we, you know, we're looking at that. All right. What about the other area? What about Cliff Road? Now, we know that there is yeah. enough width there to do at least a sidewalk. Um, the one narrow place is that where they have all the, the houses close to the road. I forget what yeah. the number is. Um, but that is another place where people are just sort of forced into the street, literally, uh, with strollers yep. and bikes and pedestrians and whatever. So um, so the, the question is, how? what's the best way to engage support for those these projects? Um, one way, uh, as I mentioned before, was to get the bicycle um, committee, uh, the traffic safety committee. Um, yeah. To, you know, maybe if we can coordinate and work together that that would bring, um, um, bring those more to the fore. I think and, that, you know, I get the emails for the traffic safety. I'm honored to be able to even, you know, occasionally put something on the agenda for my loading zone stuff. But I think that you're right, Alan, if we could 
just maybe make suggestions for the agenda through through Erica and Art for that. And on the bike committee as well with Jason or whoever the chair is now, I'm not sure exactly who the chair is. Jason, I think is still the chair. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you get three committees talking about this stuff, it, it'll end up getting to that next step because that, that Cliff Road section needs to be done in a way where all those property owners are engaged Exactly. And part, they have to be stakeholders because they might pay for the landscaping. They might pay for the labor. They might do something because they, it's in their best interest to have a little three or four foot brick or edge on their front of their driveways and all that landscape. Every single house now from Russell Pope's to the other side is pretty much done. Like, today's kind of done now mm -hmm. pretty much you know what i mean mm -hmm. so they're going to want to have a say in what it looks like but all we really need is three feet on each side two or three feet to just allow a shoulder walking at least something to get people off the road exactly uh, right. between highland ave and sherman turnpike right so exactly. all right well um alan yes is there is there any benefit or uh, thought on <clears throat> the town has has got a sidewalk committee where they're reviewing sidewalks and and uh, trying to determine the best kind of construction and all of that stuff um, and I believe Rob has sort of staked out areas where he feels that uh, a minimal kind of sidewalk. Uh, is sufficient as opposed to an historic sidewalk or a um, full-blown sidewalk. He's putting uh, Cape Cod berm in some places and whatever. Uh, even though there is not sidewalk there, is there any um, advantage to having that committee um, know that there's, um, there's sidewalk needs there and for them to at least have it on their radar that if they're doing a down and dirty kind of sidewalk, maybe they can include uh, an area such as that. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good um, yeah, that's a good idea, Bill. Um, 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 all right. Well, um, between now and our September meeting, then. I'll contact the chair of, um, say, traffic safety we want, the bicycle, I forget what their full title is, but the bicycle committee, the one that Jason was um, in charge of. Alan, I seem to be back. Bicycle oh. safety. I'm sorry, uh, bicycle safety committee. So, um, Lee, uh, we were just talking about uh, solutions to the four missing sidewalk areas. And uh, one suggestion was to engage these other committees, the traffic safety committee, the, the bike safety committee, uh, the sidewalk committee, and anyone else, <laughs> any other committee, uh, to see if we can coordinate um, our efforts on those. Uh, as I think now was just, or no, Bill was just saying, at least as a minimum to get a sidewalk uh, into those places to, you know, for pedestrian safety anyway. Well, uh, there's one household on this call that would really like a Pleasant Street sidewalk. Yeah, that, that was one of the places. We have Pleasant Street, we have Prospect Street, we have Cliff Road and Quaker Road. Those are the, the, four, the four areas that we want to um, try and come up with solutions <laughs> and to work together maybe with these other committees to see if we can't get some activity. Um. Alan, do I see Ken Bogrand? Yes. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I okay. do not know what happened to my Zoom, but it all collapsed. Uh oh. There we go. I wasn't on gallery. Yeah. 
Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so, Alan, quick. Just, just a quick question on all this. Sure. You, you, I would have, uh, you know, maybe expected that in the, um, I don't know, um, in fact, maybe Nat knows this, in the capital program priority listing on the bike path line, we would have picked up where the town, quote unquote, is in the priority sequence of bike paths. In other words, is uh, Tom Never's going to stay way above these and these aren't going to go anywhere? Or I, I how, how do we that, coordinate with the town on that, you know? I think Andrew might be able to help with that answer. But my, my short, quick answer to that, uh, uh, Rick, would be the large, huge ones like Tom Nevis, Wall Winnet, which is a whole nother federal grant process that we've already started town meeting last year with that vote. There was a vote for some money that we had to put up. And um, those are sort of like out in a different group, whether it's going to be a TIP project or whether it's going to be, you know, bid, that's mm -hmm. millions to do Tom Nevis. So you have these smaller ones and these little sort of visual mini improvements to connect one thing to another are sort of, I think I just, um, I, I don't know. I mean, they're part of like what, 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 what Bill brought up a minute ago about the traffic, about the sidewalk committee. I don't even know if we actually still have that committee, but what came out of that was the 1 million a year or 1.5 brick right. that automatic money that gets yes, right. appropriated and put in an account specifically for that. I, I believe it's down to 1 million a year, not one and a half now. I'm not sure about that 100%. I'm not on the capital committee this year, but regardless of that, it, it, I believe that's the case. But the um, but as far as these like larger ones, I mean, the, that's a that's a complicated. I don't. I don't have a perfect answer to that, other than what I said. That you know, they just they're out there on the in the queue, but they're not in an actual queue. You know, so like okay, so, we're going to do this one next time. You know, Alan, can I follow up? Yeah, no. go ahead. Uh, uh, because it it just seems clear to me that dealing with these other committees is great, but it's sort of like dealing with ourselves. You know, I know, and um, and someplace uh, in the town, these things have to be on somebody's radar someplace to go into that million dollar pot to go someplace yeah. um, otherwise think, yeah. we're sort of spinning our wheels it seems it's, to me uh, it, well what the, the problem rick is and i agree with you because what's happening is the stuff that we're talking about is sort of the old days you just go do it and just do it <laughs> send the bill see you later and that's kind of how this stuff has to be i mean this cliff road one is really a, a project that all the neighbors have to be involved with and probably they'll probably pay for most of it to, if it's done right. Uh, Prospect Street, in my opinion, needs to be done when we're working in the road. You know, if we tear that road up again and we don't fix this stuff, we should just close the Zoom account and drop it because this is crazy. That should have been done three years ago when the road was closed and ground up to, to nothing. So. I think that that type of thinking is in place now and, and with Ken here and Rob been through his first couple of years, he's seeing things, especially with South Beach Street, how things have to work here sometimes. Um, but a real project like Tom Nevis is a whole different animal than these smaller little improvement jobs, in my opinion. So. Well, I'm just saying that somebody, and maybe Ken is the guy to help us here, Ken. Usually there's a workup for whatever's going to happen on Prospect Street with sewers or something. or And and whoever is doing that ought to know that they ought to work up yeah. having this as part of the project. But my concern, if it's, if it's not in there, you know, sort of in writing, it, it could just happen like last time. So. Yeah. yeah. And I well, think... It's, that's, the departments, the departments are working together. Water and sewer are working together in DPW more than they were in the past. Mm -hmm. So, so I don't think that would happen today. But Rick, 
a safety net is definitely mm -hmm. in order. I agree. Yeah, and I so. think that's part of the reason for engaging the Traffic Safety Committee, the Bicycle Committee, and if the Sidewalk Committee is still uh, there, uh, to have more voices um, yeah. trying to highlight these areas um, in terms of priorities. So, yeah. All right, well, uh, I guess then the next step is to um, contact the chair of those various committees that we might think of. Can you think of any other committees that might be interested in sidewalk, um, you know, and in, in the issue that we're trying to address here, the traffic safety I, issue? I think, I think the, one of the main focus issues here is that Rob McNeil is, is pretty much at every traffic safety meeting. Right. And, you know, he really is the one to be sort of, you know, I don't want to say the incubator, but definitely the person that needs to have it on the radar of whatever they're up to. And between him, David, and Mark Willette, as far as any projects that are coming, right. the three, if the three of them don't know what's, what's coming, then nobody knows. They know what's going on with everything. So... I'm talking strictly now about the, the, the prospects and the, the smaller things, you know, like North Liberty street had a lot of improvements that could have happened, but two poles have to move. And you know what that's like, you know what I mean, Alan? I mean, look yeah. what just got done. Look what just got done. That street was shut down for three months mm. and we didn't fix anything. Yeah. So it's very, very frustrating. So, Anyway. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'll contact uh, before our next meeting then in September, uh, the chairs of those different committees and make a pitch. Um, well, basically what, what I, I think my idea or my thought is that what we need to do is to get more people aware of the issue um, the, the traffic safety issue that's here and to see if maybe they can come up with some suggestions or just the, the gravitas to just, just to just to um I want to just I just thought of something uh, back to what uh, Bill brought up about the sidewalk committee I was a little bit part of that at the beginning with the whole downtown thing and straight wharf and all that and Rob has I know that this exists. I just can't tell you where it is. And Mike Burns had it. So he, between him and Rob, this thing exists. They had a map of the, basically the ROH district for the most part. And they had like highlighted sort of marker where they needed to fix things like cool crosswalk a mm -hmm. mark. And I know you've seen it now. And I think Lee has seen it as well. It's like, it showed all the little tiny improvements that needed to be done in the core district, whether it was a sidewalk, a crosswalk, a curb that needed to be depressed, these little small improvements. And there was a whole bunch of them. And I think that Cliff Road thing might have been in there in a little marking too, in that little section. So that's the kind of thing we need to have a reference for all these boards to look at and have like, you know, something to reference back to instead of it just going off into nowhere, like Rick is saying, he's right. I mean, it does happen mm -hmm. where we talk about things and we don't go any further and it sort of goes away. Everybody's idea is better than the other guys. It's really not about that though. It's about keeping track of them all. We've, cause you forget them. You know what I mean, Alan? I mean, you just forget this stuff and you don't remember when, you know, when it was discussed and put on paper and who was in charge and before you know it, the guy's gone and there's somebody else. So it's, not, that's, not, I, I think no, no, it's, true. Like, it's true though. Uh, so that, what I recall is a uh, phase diagram on sidewalks to be repaired year by year. The detail that you're talking about, I don't know that I've seen it. They had a, there was a map that they had for like, for example, there was a crosswalk we were going to put in 
behind the big tree by the Brotherhood, uh, by, by the boarding house on Pearl Street, you know, Middle India Street. There was yeah. some other curb depressions for handicap access and crosswalks and things like that. I just don't know where this is, but I know I've seen it and they were working on it together and it came out of that committee and Mike and Rob had that. So mm -hmm. I know they, I know it exists. I just don't know who has it, so. Okay, it, it'll go in the minutes and we'll see what we can find. Good. Rob would definitely know. Yeah, I vaguely remember this a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, this, but, is, you know, this yeah. is back when we were getting surveys on the sidewalks and improving Easy Street, Allen. It's all during that time frame. Right. So okay. I think part part of what we're trying to do here with this conversation is to work towards solutions to some of these issues that we've been talking about for um, years in many cases. So, um, all right, well, perhaps uh, this is this is something to try coordinating with these other committees because we do share an interest here, and um, you know maybe strengthen numbers or something. You know if the select board hears um, about the issue from several different sources, maybe that will further the uh, further the. Discussion. My my quick suggestion. And I, and I don't mean to keep talking about this, but this is stuff that I'm deeply think about every day, pretty much, is if we, if we ask to have, and Rob could do this, or this could be done through, you know, town administration, whatever, is, is change that million dollars to include improvements. They don't have to be a sidewalk. It could be the the thing at Cliff Road, I guess you'd call it a sidewalk. I'd call it a shoulder. I'm not really sure what the right name is, but and maybe Ken could work on this too, is, 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 is change that language because I know that that's specifically written for sidewalks downtown, that money. Mm -hmm. And maybe make it a little bit more, you know, for smaller, other smaller improvements you know, for, for bicycles, pedestrians, et cetera, in the, in the ROH at least. And that might cover what we need for money because it's always going to be about money. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not going to be so much about who's doing it and when it'll always, the funding part is the first part that comes up. So that million a year or whatever we're doing could certainly go a long way with some of the things that we're discussing right now. Well, true. But remember that that sidewalk money um, <laughs> that we, Remember, uh, we lobbied the uh, capital program committee and we did take a little grief from the town manager for um, <laughs> appearing before the capital program to push that. But nonetheless, those downtown sidewalks, um, that's another one of our priorities here. Right. And so. No, I'm just saying maybe it would be increased to one and a half or two for a couple of years. I mean, there's plenty of ways to, to, to get the money for this stuff. Right. It's just a question. It's just a question of getting something in place that can be, you know, year to year. Right. There'd be some, there's some years we're not going to do anything. It depends on what's going on. You know, like some years they'll use up all the money and other years they won't, you know? True. So. All right. Well, to, uh, to, as far as addressing the priorities then that our committees identified, the missing sidewalks in those four areas, um, the follow-up to Lover's Lane, Akawa, and so on, those I assume are still in the, the flow of things, but uh, like everything else, they've been you know, grown to a halt for the moment. And of course, the downtown sidewalks. So, um, Am I correct in assuming that those three broad areas are, are priorities and that we can engage other committees to help us uh, maybe advance those? Alan, can I, can I, if I can make yeah, a suggestion? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I think before you go and talk to the other, other committee heads, I think it's really important to be able to track down this document that Nat was talking about with respect to 
a chart that had the areas are, that you're able to identify with respect to it. And I think that you're not going to have much success in terms of talking to the other people unless we come forward with a recommendation as to steps to take forward, whether or not they're, they're perfect or anything like that. Right. We have to have something concrete that we want to get them involved with. And we have to be able to show them a, a plan relative to how to address that. And I think that, that once you do that, you're going to be able to get the buy-in. But just go and talking to them about the issues and the concerns and the priorities, I don't think it's going to get us very far unless we have something definitive that we want to address and move forward. And the fact is, it doesn't have to be perfect, and we could prioritize in terms of what they are. But I think that before we go do that, we should be coming forward with a proposal with respect to what we think we're, are of those four or five items, what's the priority and how do we address items one, two, and three in our recommendation and what are their thoughts about that? Excellent suggestion, yes. It's amazing how if you have a plan, how that, that helps uh, people visualize what we're yeah. trying to do. Good point, excellent point. Um, okay. Great. Um, all right, anything else on that item? Text her up right now. Uh, we actually did three and four together there um, in terms of, of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's um, definitely, it sounds like more thinking is needed here. Uh, I think Ken's suggestion for coming up with a specific plan uh, that would solve each of those issues is a great idea. And then maybe even, well, <laughs> put a dollar value to it to see just what we're talking about. Okay, is there anything else on items three or four? Seeing none. Um, number five, uh, chapter 91 license monitoring system. As I said, I tried to get a hold of um, 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 Jeff. <laughs> what's his name? Jeff Carlson. <laughs> Jeff Carlson. God, between numbers and names. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I tried to get a hold of Jeff Carlson. I could not reach him for um, to see if he could be here for this meeting. Um, so uh, the question to him is, um, what is the procedure as far as the applications? I assume that all the chapter 190, uh, chapter 91 applications have to go through the conservation commission. And um, so Jeff would be the, the one who would know what the process is, the procedures are and all that sort of thing. And um, he would be the logical one to follow up with this as far as the chapter 91 licenses, the recording of them. Um, Lee, do you have anything to add to that or? Uh, yes, if we can get Jeff at the same time that Leslie can join us, that would be helpful. Um, you're quite right. The Conservation Commission must be notified by the state if there's a chapter 91 license, but the license belongs to the state. So right. the only recording that is formally required is in the deed. It's my understanding, though, that Jeff keeps a file of current licenses. As right. Rick knows, it's the past ones that um, may be out there in history that we're a little bit loose on identifying. Right. Um... Yeah, yeah I, I'm going on the assumption that Jeff has a list of all the local applications that, you know, that have gone through their office, I would assume. They uh, he, showed me, he showed me big loose leaf notebooks. I'm sorry? He has shown me big loose leaf notebooks. Alan? Yes, Rick. Uh, and, and so I, I think Lee's right, but let's just all be clear that's not the same as having a nice Excel spreadsheet with, you know, five columns you can sort on and keeping that up to date. And to my knowledge, and I think Jeff has said this as well, the only such spreadsheet that exists came out of the 
Vatican and Nantucket Harbor's update like 10 years ago. And that oh, list is still around. Right. Yeah. And, and could easily be updated. This came to my attention, I mentioned it last time, but when the property out on Quays Road was, was heard at the Conservation Commission, commissioners asked about the chapter 91. And Jeff said, oh yeah, they have to update it. But you know, I don't, I'm not aware that anything else has happened out of that. He hasn't come back to the commission to say an application was made. And I don't think it's been a regular practice to bring chapter 91 applications or approvals or whatever's necessary back to the commission if a property's notice of intent was issued in order of conditions. That sort of stops it. And the chapter 91 is like a separate process. Oh. Does that sound right, Lee? Sorry, Rick, uh, repeat, please. Well, no, I was just saying the chapter 91 process, I'm pretty sure is a separate process from the regular Conservation Commission notices of intent and orders of conditions. They may be aware that a property needs a chapter 91, but I don't recall ever seeing a, a notification or a specific requirement in an order of conditions mm -hmm. Or if the 91 took another six months to be processed, that it ever came back to the Conservation Commission. Uh, Rick, Rick, it's my understanding that the Conservation Commission must be notified by the state and the license must be recorded on the deed. But once that's done, there's no further requirement for notification. Right. But I think what we're asking, just to be clear, it seems to me, is that when Jeff is notified, he notifies us so that we can kind of represent the community and the public access interest to make sure those are represented in the application and whatever approvals are being sought. Right. So the object of this is to get a digitized list of all the Chapter 91 licenses that have been, that we, that, that we can locate, put it that way, um, presumably through the Conservation Commission or whatever other channels we can locate those and to get them digitized. Is that, is that what we're aiming for? in terms of um, keeping track of these Chapter 91 licenses? Uh, Alan? Yeah, Lee? Yes. yes, and we could consider talking to the select board about delegation of responsibility to Nantucket for the licenses. <clears throat> That's a big step. Yeah. That may not happen. Yeah. But that, that would be a goal. Well, you know, it seems as though if the Conservation Commission is getting this information, I mean, anybody who has to apply for a Chapter 91 license has to contact, has to go through them, that it sh seems to me it should be simple enough to, you know, to, to get those records. And, uh, you know, and, once you have the records to at least digitize them and get them in some some way. Alan, is, is Andrew Vore still on? I mean, I think he knows a hell of a lot more about this certainly than I ever would and might help us in how we sort of sort this out. At least he was on earlier. Yeah. Andrew, are you there? No, I don't I do not see Andrew on the grid. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, there he is. I'm Andrew here. Wilson. Hello, Andrew. Hi. So, uh, Andrew, Chapter 91 licenses, we were just talking about how do we, um, the, the goal is to digitize the Chapter 91 licenses so that um, if there was a question or something, we can look them up and so on. Right, so this would be a project that Nathan would do, um, the GIS coordinator with the information from Jeff. So, it, is, does Jeff have a pretty complete file of them? Um, I don't know. Lee, what do you think? Does, 
the, the, modern ones, yes. the modern ones, yes. The historic ones, questionable. Well, at least if, if we have the modern ones, uh, you know, that would at least give us something to, you know, to work with. Right, because, um, <clears throat> you know, for example, uh, Nathan did a project to put all the one big beach easements on a map and, you know, there's been, a, been an update for that. So that would be the great, you know, that would be the same map that he would add to. So it, it's just a matter, I guess, of retrieving the old, are the old ones all in paper format with a, with maybe a map attached to them or something? Mm-hmm. Andrew, as I said, there, Jeff showed me two big loose-leaf notebooks with uh, the information that he had. Hey, Lee, you know, maybe, look, maybe we can go down there and supply the labor and say, hey, Jeff, can we borrow your file? And, uh, you know, I've got a scanner in the office if he doesn't have time in his, and boom, we can scan him and return the file. Yeah. yeah. That, would, that, that would be helpful, actually. Yeah, good. You know, it's like free labor, and, and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. So, anyway. How, would you, how do you have a copy of every license, though? Is that at the Registry of Deeds, or is that in, is, is it online, Andrew? How does that work? Well, I think the more modern ones are a uh, registry of deeds, but that takes a huge effort to that's go. What I was, that's those just those. what I was thinking. We can't even go in the town building. And some, that's a lot of work. Some of the old ones aren't necessarily filed, so you have to dig them up. So um, it would be better to get the paper copies and then transfer them. Right, right. If you all that, can, that's, just, that's just a good start. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I'm assuming that they pop up when there's a trap property transfer or a permit for something is when they just come out of hiding. Well, right? if it's if it's properly listed, I mean, we've had to go back to oh, there was a there's a an entity called the Harbor Commission from the 1890s <laughs> and dig up these. You know, you have to go through the yeah. book page after page after page. I mean, it's a real research project. So, mm, yeah. Um, but the more we could get them in one place on one map, the better it would be. So. Right. Okay. Well, Nathan Porter is a key um, link. It sounds like, and that's someone we hadn't even considered. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. All right. Well, good. Um, so all right. Well, fo I'll follow up with um, Nathan. Uh, Porter and uh, say and Lee, uh, Lee, would you would you be interested in following up with Nathan on that to see uh, what? Uh, Alan, I'm a, I'm a little constrained about what I can do. Oh, okay. I can I can give him a call, but I certainly couldn't visit him. Yeah, no, I understand. All right. Um, Okay, and, well that's and Alan, look, I will if if it's all right with you, I suspect I can make contact with Jeff Carlson mm -hmm. and ask if we could come down and pick up the file. At least we'd know what the if there's a possibility that we could do that. Great. Right? Okay, that would be great. That would be good. That that will get us that will get the ball rolling, so to speak. Good. Okay, anything else on chapter ninety one, license number five? Okay, number six, road encroachments and public main, public road maintenance. Uh, this came, uh, th this item uh, I put on the agenda, um, you know, we had talked about encroachments and Rick uh, sent me <laughs> uh, a picture of uh, Pulpus Road with um, a big chunk out of the edge of the road. Uh, I do the pulpus, I drive it several times a day back and forth, and I've counted five or six of these missing pieces here. So I thought it was worth um, um, seeing as far as public road maintenance. This came out of a discussion of uh, the um, area association over at Hummock Pond wanted uh, the town to take the private roads over there 
and it was a question of maintenance of the private roads. Oh. And Rickers, you're, talking about, you're talking about Ahab and those? Yeah. Alan? Well, no, uh, no I, think, yeah. I, I, I think it was the ones going down where they put the water there, which is even okay. worse. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, so uh, we explained to them about public roads and private roads and the responsibility and that the reason that the town doesn't take them is because they don't want to maintain them. But uh, Rick made the point at that meeting that you know, that the town has a hard enough time keeping up with the maintenance of their existing public ways, um, you know, let alone taking on more uh, private ways and making them, them, them public. Um, so anyway, I wanted to open that up for discussion and uh, with say Bill Grader, is Bill still with us? Bill, are you there? Bill's oh, here. Bill, you're muted. He's, there he goes. That's because oh, I've, learned, I've learned my place. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bill. Uh, Bill, yeah, we're Bill. Uh, we're on numbers, uh, item number six, yeah. uh, the encroachments and um, maintenance of the public ways. Did you? Uh, you had, yeah, is, uh, is Rick through with his section? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do was, uh, I was glad this was on the agenda because um, um, this past summer uh, has been a very interesting time in Madiket. It's become uh, the COVID, Nantucket's dining COVID solution. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to show you uh, if I can share the screen. Um, and let me get to someplace here. COVID dining solution. I like that. Uh, Bill, where are you talking about? Uh, it's a whole Madiket Road, Washington Ave conundrum. The, 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 the conundrum that you're addressing, um, that was a situation encroachment on the road, on Medicate Road, or, oh, there we go. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so that is Ames Ave. Yeah. Um, let me get another one. There's another Ames Ave. Bill, what do they say? A picture's worth a thousand words? Yeah. Um, I guess they're not taking the shuttle. So here is, <laughs> here is Chicago Street uh, before the sunset. And you'll note that uh, right there, you could get one car down uh, in one direction. But as uh, darkness prevails, um, you, you can't it's barely can get one car down there. You certainly couldn't get an ambulance down there. Um, and Madiket Road, this is Washington Ave. And uh, you'll note there's still, um, you get a good line of uh, an idea of the encroachment that's there. Right. Uh, and you, you know, the, it goes all the way back to where these hedges are there. So, if this encroachment wasn't here, there, there certainly is room for um, two-way traffic and, and parking and whatever. Um, they got to a point that the uh, police department, and let me get out of sharing the screen. Um, if I can get back there. Um, there we go. The um, the police department finally, because there was cars parked on the bike path from Chicago all the way to C Street, D Street. Um, and so well, the police department came out and they determined a course of action. And that was for um, folks to call in every time uh, because the police are extremely shorthanded. It's kind of scary. Um, 
if you if you really realize how short they are and how few officers are on duty at night. Mm. Um, and so, um, because Maddock at Millie's was one of the was the only place I believe in town that's been able to replicate all of their seating outside. Um, and uh, so it's just been a boon. They are also advertising, um, uh, you know, to go dinners, to go to the beach and watch the sunset, take your drinks with you, that sort of stuff. <laughs> very successful. Um, and, uh, you know, we got bonfires and, and everything. So the police came up with a, a plan um, for folks to call with license plate numbers, pictures, whatever they can do. And they're dispatching uh, cops out, uh, pulling them from a sector to send them out there. Um, but they can't, they can't ticket for no parking where there is not a no parking sign. So the quest that we've had for Washington, um, you know, is, is still there. It's been a year since the folks came in. Uh, the town did go out uh, without any hearing that I saw and place no parking on both sides of Ames Ave from Madiket Road to the bridge. So now they have a reason to go out uh, mm -hmm. and, and ticket. Um, I went back through the correspondence uh, and it's a year ago almost to the day that the uh, neighbors came in to the right of ways and asked for some relief. Um, and so I think at this time at the very least, uh, you know, and Ken and Rob gave them some, gave us some verbal updates, but we haven't really gotten uh, a synopsis or a document of where things are so that we can bicycle it out to these folks. Uh, quite frankly, I'm getting tired of getting the calls um, and not being able to give an official response. Hmm. So um, I would like uh, us to um, either, well, since Ken's here, that sort of takes the, the, the um, onus uh, of trying to draft something, but to get an official status of where we are, um, I know the person on Madigan Road that encroached with their berm and stuff, they finally came down and removed that. And since they've done that, that flooding has gone away. Mm -hmm. uh, which was right at the end of F Street. Right. So, uh, you know, the people just are, are looking for answers and quite frankly, they figure after years, to more than a year, but Officially, this last um, ask was a year ago. So I think we, we owe it to them to uh, give some answers. Well, Bill, just a comment with respect to Washington Avenue, with, uh, with respect to that one of the first photos that you had there, that green space that goes back to the, the hedge, that green space is in fact the town property. And, and, so, and so some of those stakes that Patty it wants me to try and take out of there the town put there in fact to discourage anybody from parking on the town property uh, because you saw that the sign was right there that says no parking on either side of the street uh, and the fact is if we take these take those stakes out people are going to be parking on the lawn there and that's parking on town property that's encroaching on town property the so I, i'm caught between a rock and a hard place yeah. Well, first off, the, that sign was only that sign is only good down to that end of the street and was put in so that the, the swing could be made. That is the only no parking uh, either side on Washington Ave. Um, and the gentleman put the put the stakes in. Uh, the town didn't do that. The gentleman did that at uh, the closed Baltimore. Uh, uh -huh. And he actually had an altercation with one of the uh, neighbors uh, children uh, and accuse them of snapping those all off because a good deal of them are snapped off with maybe four mm. inches or three inches sticking yeah. above grade. Um, yeah. he, oh. he accused the girl of, of damaging his property. Um, the parents weren't home. They call the police. The police came out. Uh, it's pretty ugly. Yikes. But, I mean, I, Bill, I, I would, I would, I would welcome from you some some guidance in terms of how to deal with it, because uh, I mean, I really, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place in terms of how to solve that problem out there. Well, you, know, yeah. widen, you got to widen Washington Street to what you want it to be and have on one side parking. 
I mean, does anybody want that though, Bill? They want one side parking. They do? Well, they can't get down there. You know, with all the landscape vehicles and all the stuff, you can't yeah. get down there at night. It, we are, we are, you know, a, um, a nanosecond from somebody getting killed out there or seriously injured at night. You saw the pictures with the vehicles. And no, stuff? no, no. I understand, but do they know that? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah. It, to have it two way and parking, you're going to have to have a 27 feet of pavement. I mean, it's not going to work otherwise. 27, you know, ish. Amelia drives 23, so you know now what works. Yeah. So just, I mean, I'm just saying, do they want that? I mean, New Street in Sconce is the widest road on the island. Just keep that in mind. One hell of a wide road, that is. You can do a lot of things. You can drive a Sherman tank and an Abrams tank and a car. No problem. Yeah. So, but I just don't, I mean, Andrew's still on. I mean, that road is... What's the layout of Washington? 50 feet, I believe it was? Yes, 50 feet. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, the thing is, Bill, and, I, and I've been getting some calls from, from one of the people out there about the trash, and I talked to their management. They're going over there to pick the trash up at night because if all the trash from Millie's is filling up the town barrels, like, like really fast. And they've been supposedly, and I checked again with them the other day, they are doing it. Yeah, so we, you're we have, getting the you're getting the traffic calls. I'm getting the trash calls. So well, I get, I get getting the trash calls also. We actually there's people going out and picking up the debris uh, yeah. and all the Millie's bags, and they've been dumping them on Millie's porch. Oh, and, well, that's and, just you know great. Well, I'll so, tell you what, it worked because Bo decided yeah, after Libby called them uh, yeah. because they were going they were getting ready to go to the selectmen's meeting about it. Well, uh, all I know is the kid, two different people at Millie's told me they were going down there at night picking the stuff up. Now, I'm sure yeah. that they didn't do it. I'm sure they didn't do it every night perfectly. They, they you know what I mean? They are doing it every night. They are doing it yeah. every night. Yeah. It's, it's been a vast improvement. Um, yeah. But I, I kind of I kind of gave the, the, the young guy out there that's been there a couple of years a little, a little uh, mm -hmm. town, uh, you know, something to think about you know, about why you got to kind of work together. But anyway, so I think, I think though, Bill, seriously, I mean, this is kind of out of our purview a little bit, some of this stuff, mm -hmm. but it, here, Madiket, it, it, I mean, nobody wants anything and then they want something. It's very, very, very hard to please, to fix this. I, I don't, you know, five more years, it won't even be a Millie's Bridge. So maybe in 10, there won't be a Millie's. I don't know, okay? But Chicago Street, or Chicago Ave, or whatever that road is called, should be one way, possibly. I mean, there's a lot of parking goes on back there that works, I mean, pretty well. Like, you can walk through that little um, thing in the back, that little path that they have to go to the restaurant. To, but the, this year's takeout, I'm not saying it won't happen next year like this, but it's certainly way more takeout this year than it's ever been. So that's why the trash is, and I'm sure that little land bank place down there at Little Neck has probably got a lot of trash too. But the, the Washington Street thing has to be decided by the neighbors, don't you think? Everybody needs to decide, okay, we will be okay with 27 feet of pavement and parking on one side of the road. So here's the thing. The, okay. the neighbors were told what the town was going to do. The, the neighbors were told the town was going to survey the road, determine encroachments, and have the encroachments removed. For example, the USS Neversail uh, has been sitting oh, for yeah. 100 years. Um, and there are, some, there are some doorways that step right out under the, into the roadway and, and whatever. So... Um, you know, the water department, when it was going to run water down there, Bob Gardner said, I'm tired of this crap. I'm not digging up uh, the road. I'm going to use the, the road layout, which would have gone through all those hedges. At the yeah. very end, he changed his mind and dug the road up. <laughs> um, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's been an issue. And my point is, a t you know, the town gave the neighbors and the abutters 
a process that was going to be done. At the very least, the town owes them uh, an update on that and what the next step is. And if you think that they need to come in and vote on it or whatever, fine. But at this point, all we're getting is, um, that, I'm, that I'm getting is, what's going on? How come, you know, that we haven't heard, we haven't gotten any updates and, and whatever. So I think at the very least, we owe them an official update and where it's at. Okay, I, uh, in terms uh, in terms of a solution, I think uh, as Nat said that um, <laughs> you know people have to agree. Um, you know, I don't think there's ever going to be a parking lot or anything like that down there uh, to address no. these issues. Um, so, I mean, the hmm. ask the original ask was no parking one side. That hmm. was the original ask. Period. Right. Please make it no parking one side. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that makes all the and sense. And that's where we are now because the um, can, um, uh, the traffic guy that left. Um, Mike Burns. Yeah, he said you know uh, he wouldn't do anything without uh, finding out the road layout, and the chief agreed, and so chief said he won't. He won't ticket until the signs there, and Mike said he wouldn't put signs up until they knew, um, you know, for encroachment. So now we know. So at the very least, we put up no park in one side. There's, the road's not widened. Uh, there's pedestrian uh, ability to walk down there, and if that's the best that uh, we can do, but at least we've done something. This has been. So, you, so you're asking for signage on the, I guess I'll call it the east side, right? The they east. Didn't, they didn't even specify which side. They said whichever side the town. No, you, well, that's the only side you can have no parking on because there's less obstruction on the west side. Yeah. Mailboxes are moved back and, yeah. you know, things are kind of almost set up in the layout the right oh, way. I agree. I'm just saying they, they didn't ask for a specific. Yeah. They just asked yeah. for no parking on one side, period. They didn't ask for roads to be widened. They didn't ask for sidewalks nothing so bill what you're asking for is an update as to where the town is and trying to sort this out correct and who would who would that come from the update uh would it be from uh, rob mcneil or would it be i'm just trying to think of yeah i mean I'm it's again back to the it's time. back to the tra traffic safety would have to sort of just make that recommendation to the select board and then the signs would get put in on the right I would assume on the side spe specified um, because that's how it usually happens you know that it goes in that process but uh, I will discuss it with Rob at my meeting with the, my regular meeting with the DPW this Friday. Okay, great, great. And then, yeah, we'll see. And um, um, so, Bill, if, if you received word from, say, Ken or from Rob and so on, you could pass that on to your membership out there, correct? Absolutely. Good. All right. Yeah. Well, then. Um, it, has to be, it has to be someone like Ken or Rob that can definitively say something that someone like Bill can say, this is what's going on because it's hard. I, I understand what he's talking about. I just, I just, been, I feel like, I feel like we've been talking about this for like almost a quarter of a century. So it's hard to get, hmm. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's been going on a long time. It I isn't know, just I Millie's, know. but I, I hear you though. Well, it's, it's, it's far worse this year. I mean, based on those photographs that, yeah, uh, no, that's and the we worst understand, it's ever been. Yeah, we understand why that is. So, all right. Um, so Bill, um, as Ken said, he would, he would get with, um, Rob this Friday. Last year, Alan. Hey. I think Alan's in Pulpus. 
think yeah. Alan, I think Alan's using uh so he's got solar batteries are dying in Popus. I think he's over there in his place out there. Lee, can you are you there? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. A Andrew's got his uh mic muted, but Alan does not. Alan, can you hear us? No, I think Alan is uh he just froze up. I'm trying to tell where he is right now with his background. I he think just he might shut be down. Up. He just shut okay. down. Yeah. So anyway, so he needs a bigger boat. Yeah. What was the other part of the agenda, Lee, on the public road maintenance? Uh, no, after this item, it was it was comments. Okay. Well, the only thing that showed on the agenda is the uh, comments on the historic colored ceremony cemetery access. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that looks. I mean, I drove through that little hospital thing there the other day. It seems to be pretty, you know, much the way it was supposed to be to the, with the original plan. Uh, <clears throat> you know, guys, the thing that's missing is a. Um, a handicap. Oh, okay. That was Alan. Yeah. Alan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the meeting is still on. Um, I think people can hear me. They know that you just called me. Um, and we're getting close to my reporting about the little handicap ramp at the um, historic college. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's plaguing us. Look, uh, Alan, I think the appropriate thing is uh, is for us to uh, adjourn. Um, okay, all right, thanks. Okay, bye bye. All right. So if you can hear me, um, Alan has been following up with the hospital about a little ramp so that. Uh, wheelchair access into the historic Colored cemetery uh, would be possible. And with okay. that as a report, uh, let's adjourn. Okay. Well, there's exactly. nothing like taking charge, Lee. Exactly. Lee's hungry. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're Thank adjourning you. at 5.16 p.m. Agreed? Yep. Thank you very okay. much for everyone's help. Thank you. All right. Bye bye, everyone. Take care. What am I doing? Bye.